Peter, we're going to talk a little bit about what happened at BET. Yeah. Um, and actually, Peter, you were running something special at BET. Do you want to just give a quick overview of what you were running at, at BET? Yeah, sure, James. Thanks. Yeah. So, hi, everyone. Um, at the BET show this year, uh, Google asked Apps Events to create a uh, Google experience all about building the future of education. And within that experience, we set up several zones, one focused on adaptive learning, so how uh, tools like practice sets and uh, some new features we're about to look at are uh, being used and how AI can help with that. We looked at accessible learning, so different accessibility features available on Workspace and Chrome OS now. And of course, we also looked at safer learning, so how we can keep schools safe from cybersecurity threats. And yeah, we saw uh, hundreds, if not thousands of people come through that experience. During the BET show, Google, of course, had a lot of updates and we've uh, consolidated ways down into the slide deck. Uh, we've got some live demos on some of these, which aren't very widely available at the moment, but will be coming soon. Um, so yeah, let's uh, kick off and have a look through. And I just thought we'd drop this graphic in from Google, which I thought provides a really nice summary of everything which has launched in a, a nice way to you know, perhaps to share with your staff. Uh, but we're going to go through each one of these now, and I think we're going to kick off with practice sets, uh, which James is going to take us through. Right. Should be, I mean, just a quick, quick note. A lot of these features we're going to talk about now are on the upgrade versions of Google Workspace. So that would be uh, many of them are in teaching and learning upgrade and then education plus as well. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is the um, Google Classroom practice sets. I'm going to do a quick sort of a three, four minute overview of practice sets. I know we looked at these a few months ago. But we'll do another quick demo um, and just see how they're working out. There's a couple of new features that have been launched as well. It should be noted that it's still fairly early for practice sets. It does look great, but they're all constantly talking about bringing out new features for it. So it is still quite early for practice sets. But let's take a quick look. OK, I'm just opening up a demo account I have set up. I'm going to walk through how to create a practice set and then what it looks like once you've, once you've generated that practice set. I apologize. It might look a little bit small on the screen. I'll try to zoom in where I can. OK, to create a, to create a practice set, you just go through to Classroom, go through to Create, and then you click on Assignment. You can go to Practice Sets directly and create a practice set independent of the class. But we're going to do it as if we're in Classroom. We want to create a new assignment. We're going to create a practice set in line. And you can see down here, we've got well, two new tabs, actually, here. Well, the YouTube one was always there. Peter will come to that in a few minutes. But we're going to look at this one here down, down at Practice Sets. We click on this. This is a new assignment. Click on Practice Sets. And it's going to open up the Practice Sets creation area, window, <laughs> for want of a better word. I can see here, obviously, I've got a, a, a few different ones I've been, been playing around with in the background. We'll just ignore those for a moment. And I go ahead and create a new practice set. So when I create a practice set, I have a couple of options, a couple of different options for creating my practice set. Now, yeah, back to a conversation with James Seymour yesterday. It always seems to be that math teachers are at the forefront of using technology in their class. And we're going to we're going to stick with that. Um, we're going to stick with that theme right now. I'm going to create a practice set for a math class, for an algebra class, or any kind of math class. And there are a couple of reasons behind that, as we'll, as we'll see. Right, as you once you've named your practice set, then you can go ahead and um, type in your question. So very simple question. Very simple linear equation question. Solve b plus 2 equals 5. Now, we have a couple of options for the answer. We can. Um, write this as a short answer question. It can be paragraph, probably unlikely in this case, single select or multi select. Three of these you can obviously see are auto grading, probably familiar with this from, from Google Forms. Paragraph, of course, is not going to be available for auto grading at the future. But for now, we have short answer, we have single select, and we have multi, multi select. I'm going to stick with short answer for now. So I created the question, b plus 2 equals 5. Obviously, the answer is going to be equal to 3. And I'm just going to type in one answer here as well. Now, it could be that some students, instead of typing 3, they type the answer as b equals 3 as well. And so I can actually answer 
create a second answer for that. So you can create your different answers for the question. Now, what you can normally do, and I notice it's a little bit slow, I think it might be my internet, but you can actually, it will look at the question. In fact, let me just maybe a little bit more descriptive. Solve the equation, solve the linear. Google will try to look at the question and see if it can recommend a skill. And sometimes these pop up automatically. If they don't, you can open a few words and it will look for learning objectives related to standards related to your question. It does this now at the moment from my understanding is it looks at standards from common US Common Core at the moment. That is my understanding. And it's not just for math. You can get standards for multiple different subjects. But it is, from my understanding, it is currently just US Common Core. Um, Peter, actually, a quick question. I think you have to be in US English right now. Is that correct for this? Or does it matter any English? Yeah, practice sets is currently only available in English. But I spoke with Google yesterday, and more languages are coming later this year. Great. Peter, was it was it right? Was it Spanish, Portuguese, Japanese? What what other languages? Um, I think we mentioned it yesterday. Spanish and really Japan, good. yeah, Spanish and Japanese are, are the next up. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. So we created our question, and what we see just down here now that we've got our standard in here, it's got down here a little yellow ideas balloon, and it, this says this problem has hints and resources for students. Preview them and try as a student. Let's go ahead and have a look at this question. This practice set. I click on. Try a student. Okay, just making sure you can still see this. So here we go. We've got a question. This is what the student would see. And what we can see over here, we obviously got a question. We've got our answer, answer blank just here. We can optionally, we can show our work. Uh, this tool down here is if you want the students to respond to add a, um, a sketch response. Maybe they want to show their work by sketching. What I would want to draw your attention to is this little balloon over on the right hand side. And if I hover over that, it, says it, show, it, it comes up as show a hint. And so what the student can do is they can click on this and then Google will present some um, perhaps examples, some videos, some text on hints on how to, to answer the question. So depending on the question type, depending on the content, different resources are going to come up here. And we can see here we have an example of how to solve a linear equation. If they want to go and enter the answer, they can. They could just type in the answer, of course, and then they can check the answer. It is important to understand that, yes, they know immediately where they've got it right or wrong. Lovely little graphic that comes up there. OK. So let's go back to the editing of this. And I want to show you something else very quickly. What was just released, um, I think, just a few days ago, was the ability to import questions. So if you just look down here, so I'm just going to go back and make sure you can see this. Yep. If you look at the button just down here, we have the ability to import questions. If I click on this, it's going to open up the Google Drive file picker. Um, and you can see I've actually got a couple of, couple of here I was testing. And I have this worksheet here of one step equation. So rather than thinking about importing all of my questions, what I can actually do now is I can just select questions from this worksheet. So I can go through here and just draw a box around the questions that I want to use. I don't need to include the question number. I've got four questions selected. Click on import, and it imports those questions. Now you can edit these. It imports them as, a, as, an, as you can see as an image. So you can still edit these. You can type in here, obviously, you solve the equation. OK, so solve the equation. Um, I can see this time, actually, the skills actually has been suggested. So you can see skills, see suggested. And there we go. We can see that solving linear equations is a suggested skill, and we can choose that. Of course, we're going to go ahead and enter, enter our answer here. So there is our answer, and then, then we, could, um, we, we could try this out as a student. Right, one more very, just very mindful of time. One more thing I just wanted to showcase, especially for math teachers. If I create a new question just down here. Before I do this, I'm going to open up the practice set settings. And there is one option here. There is allow equivalent answers. 
So that means that answers with equivalent values would be marked as correct. So I'm going to select this box here, allow equivalent answers. And for this question, we're going to say we're going to simplify the fraction um, 64 out of just 128. So here's my, here's my question. Simplify the fraction 64 out of 128. Um, I think it takes a few seconds for it to, to recommend the skills. OK, here we go. We've got right equivalent fractions as my skill. Now, on this case, I'm going to simplify the fraction. I'm going to put in the answer as 1 out of 2. It doesn't say, the question doesn't say, what is the simplest form of this? And that's important because now we're going to try this as a student. It's going to come up with an error because I haven't put answers in for all my other questions, but that's OK. Let's go ahead and try this as a student. Give it a second to load here. I'm going to scroll all the way down to that very last question. And we can see, just zoom in a little bit, simplify the fraction 64 out of 128. Now, what if I didn't simplify all the way and I didn't go down to 1 out of 2, but instead I just went down to 2 out of 4? And it has marked that answer correct because it's detected that is it mathematically or it's calculated that is the same fraction equivalent to the answer that I provided already. And that's how it's calculated that one. So you can see there, you can actually enter. But I mean, it's a little bit limited into what different answers it's going to detect, but you can have equivalent answers rather than having to worry about writing down all of the different equivalent answers. Uh, certainly in mathematics, it could take a very long time. You can you can use, use the calculated feature. OK, that was a hopefully a very sort of a quick high level overview of practice sets. Um, before we move on to Peter, I know you're going to talk about YouTube. Peter, is there anything you want to mention? If I, if I missed anything out there? No, I think you've covered it all really well. Yeah, as you said, the big new feature is you can now import PDFs into practice sets. But important to highlight, it's not just for maths. It, it's got lots of other skills you can use for other subjects. So um, yeah, do, uh, do have a look at it once you uh, get it added to your domain. I was just going to quickly show this. I know that, Peter, you've been working on this with the Google team as well. We didn't talk about what it looks like for a teacher. And this is kind of the big thing, really, why it's so useful. It's easy to create the assignments. It's very flexible. But I think what the coolest thing is, when the teacher gets the submissions back, they have this kind of very visual, very graphical view of how the students did. And we can see we've got our students listed down here. We've got the grade for the different assignments, the score that they got. And we can see very easily which questions they got right, which questions they got wrong. And um, there are different ways to go through this assignment. You can see an overview of problem one, problem two, how many were correct, how many were, uh, were incorrect just here. But what I really like is this insight section. And this unrolls. So, um, once the students, I'm not so sure if everybody has to submit or if this builds up as students are submitting. I have to see how that rolls out. Mm -hmm. But the insight section is very useful because it will give you an overview of the assignment. So, for example, here it's saying right away, two students got problem number three incorrect. And what it will also pull out is if one student did particularly badly on the assignment, it would list down the students who did particularly badly as well. So, if you've got a big list of students and you want to have a quick check before class just to see an overview of how people did. I think these insights are going to be very interesting. And I think we'll see a lot of development of that in the future. OK, um, Peter, do you want to bring the slide up about YouTube, or do you want to? Um, it's OK. I'll dive straight into a, a demo, shall I? Um, okay, let me just share my screen. Uh, so what we're going to be looking at now is uh, a new ability within Google Classroom to add interactive YouTube, um, interactive questions to YouTube videos. So let me just find the right tab. I've got quite a few tabs open here. Just while Peter sets this up, I think this is brilliant. I, I think the way this works, it's if you compare it to Edpuzzle, which is a natural thing to do, it's missing a couple of features, but just the ease of use and the fact that it's embedded in Classroom, I think it's fantastic. Absolutely. So, And it's really easy to set up as well. So I'm going to go into Classwork and create a new assignment first of all. Hit close, and I'm going to attach a YouTube video. And you might have noticed that um, earlier this year or, or late last year, this interface has also been updated. It's now when you insert a YouTube video, 
into Classroom, it automatically strips away all the ads, comments, and everything else, and is a much cleaner uh, YouTube player. Uh, but with the new interactive questions feature, uh, once we add our video, we can then add some questions to our video. So let's hit add questions now. I can provide some instructional text here to begin with, but I can simply uh, choose the moment in the video where I want to add a question. So let's select about here and then select add to add our new question. So it's got the time code there and then I can add our question. And I'm just gonna copy and paste this in to save me uh, uh, typing all this uh, and save us all a bit of time. And let's pop in a few answers. And what I'm doing is one of the interesting things uh, we've noticed about this is it's actually also using the uh, practice sets on the back end for this. So when you go to the marking later, you'll notice uh, the practice sets interface there is on the marking side, uh, which is really cool. Uh, if we want to, we can shuffle the order. And of course, we can also select which is the correct answer. Uh, and once we've done that, I'm just gonna add one question uh, at the moment. We can press attach. Okay, so that's done now. Um, in terms of how it looks for students, as you can see, it was really easy to do. Uh, let me just close that. And now let's uh, share one uh, we made earlier. And let's go and have a look at how it looks for a student. So a student would see their assignment, they'd click on the YouTube video, they'd open the video in the new, nice, clean interface, and they can start playing that. Hey there. So if you were investigating... Now let's just skip ahead a bit. So uh, let's skip ahead about to, to here and we'll play from here and see what happens. So first, let's pause and think about what the properties are that we know about Square and which are the ones we're going to need. So then the video automatically pauses and the question appears down the bottom for the student to answer. Uh, we all know what the correct answer is in this case, and when we can hit submit. Or if we're not sure, we can actually just press rewatch and rewatch that section uh, before continuing on. So let's hit submit. And then we can press continue, and the video will continue playing. So, And we'll, of course, pause uh, for the next question as you go through. So really good for checking student understanding, making sure they are watching. Uh, video and understanding the content. Uh, and once they are done, you can of course review their work. So let's select review work and let me just share this tab instead. And as you can see here, we've got a very familiar looking interface. Uh, it's, this has been, uh, this is using the uh, practice sets interface. Again, we can see an overview here of who's answered correctly or not. Uh, and again, we've got the insights up here, so we can see uh, what particular questions uh, students might be struggling with. So um, yeah, a really useful interface for teachers to hopefully make uh, marking a bit quicker and also help check that students are understanding uh, the content. Was there anything else uh, to add there? I've missed James, do you think? No, I think it looks great. Um, actually, one of the questions uh, Darren just asked was, does it have to be tied to a Google Classroom? I believe it does. Peter, have you got any more insights on that? Yeah, it does. It's only available in Google Classroom. And again, just like practice sets, only for Education Plus and Teaching and Learning Upgrade. Yeah, that's yeah. right, Darren. Thanks for mentioning that. What do the, yeah, okay. So uh, Laurie just asked, what do the different green colors mean? I think that's when you you get the student can edit their response. Yeah, so as we can see on this one, this student had three attempts to get this question right. So if it's a dark green, they got it in the first go. If it's a lighter green, they took a few attempts to um, get that right. And actually, so, uh, I did see the question a second ago. It's just gone. Somebody was asking if we can disable the hint. Oh, yeah, Leighton was asking, can you turn off the hint? This is back to practice sets. Can you okay. turn off the hint? I think if you don't enter a standard, a learning standard yeah. into the standards bar, there would be no hint for that question. Yeah, I think that's right. I haven't tested that, Leighton, but I believe that would be correct. 
because it picks up the hints from the standards. Okay, as Peter just talked about, Peter just talked about the um, interactive questions on YouTube. Quick reminder, Dan mentioned it as well. It is for Education Plus and Teaching and Learning Upgrade. But certainly, I mean, there are some great reasons to, to get those premium licenses, everybody. Okay, now on to, there's a couple of releases for Chromebooks. Peter, I think back to you, you got the Chromebook releases. Yeah, sure. Um, so recording uh, with a screencast app, that was introduced uh, last year on Chromebooks. Uh, it's a really useful app if you've never used it before. So it not only records your screen and lets you annotate on screen while you're recording, but also automatically generates a transcript of that and students can use that transcript then to navigate through your video and read along as you're talking uh, and allows them to search your video uh, but it also allows you to edit that video uh, the big update here on the screencast app is that there is expanded language support uh, i can't remember which languages are being supported next but um i think spanish is highly likely in portuguese but also um there's a new web player because previously uh, you needed to be on a Chromebook and use a Chromebook app for this. But with a web player, it opens it up to videos being played on other platforms as well. So, yeah, really excited to see uh, this uh, app get updated. And Peter, I think you did a demo of this, didn't you, on a previous call? Yeah, we do. So if we, we can always share it again in the chat later. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we, we did an in-depth walkthrough of this when it first got released. Uh, and this is coming in version 112 of Chrome OS. Brilliant. Okay, cast moderator. Yes, yeah, so another. So this was uh, originally released uh, last year. We did a call on this uh, again on how to set up cast moderator on your Chromecast. Um, just a reminder, it needs the Google TV Chromecast, uh, which runs Android. And this lets you wirelessly share your screen in the classroom. And it also enables students to share their screens. So if you want to show a piece of student work up on the screen, then Cast Moderator is a great option. Uh, the new features here, which have just been announced, it's getting extended language support again. But it's also, um, I know teachers uh, really like having the ability to pause their screen. Uh, so they can have that paused while we're working on something else, uh, getting something else ready to show up on screen. Uh, so that's really nice to see. And you can also now switch tabs. So just like if you're uh, presenting in a Google Meet call like this, you can switch tabs uh, to seamlessly switch from one tab to another and have that shown on screen. Uh, you can do that now with uh, Cast Moderator. So great to see that getting updated. Brilliant. OK, we have a few more uh, Google Workspace updates that were announced at BET. And you may have seen these actually online already, so we'll go through these fairly quickly. A quick reminder. Um, they are actually, a lot of these are going to be on the Education Plus version, the Education Plus licenses. A lot of these revolve around the smart canvas and the smart chips features, which are within, within Google Drive or especially within Google Docs now. So we'll, we'll look at these. The first one is custom building blocks. You might be familiar already that you can insert a building block, for example, meeting notes directly into a document. What you can do now is actually create your own custom building blocks. So for example, it could be a lesson plan, it could be a newsletter, a variety of different custom documents that people are using. Once you have your template, you can create a custom, custom building block out of that. And it just makes it very much easier to insert into another doc. Don't have any details on the exact launch date for this. I mean, obviously it says they're coming soon, but I don't know exactly when that will be launching. The next one is, and then talking about Smart Canvas, Smart Chips, um, stopwatch and timer that you can drop into Google Docs. So timer is obviously counting down, easy to show. How much time is left for a class activity? I could do with one of those for all of my Google Meets, I think. And stopwatch chips to count up. So you can easily count time. It's just a really easy way to count time. Quite often, teachers want to use that timer function, and they're looking for a new tab to open up a timer. Or with this, they can easily do it with their doc that's on screen. And another great one is voting chip. So again, a smart chip, voting chip is coming out, uh, making it easy to, to gather votes from within a Google document, just making it a little bit more interactive. OK, this update is not for Workspace. This one is uh, for Google Classroom. 
it's making it a little bit easier to grade within Google Classroom. And by that, you're able to break up your grading into grading or marking periods. And so, for example, it could be by quarter, it could be by semester, by term, whatever those grading or marking periods are, you're able to define that now within, within classroom grading. That's really, really useful because the classroom grading, I think, could do with that, with those upgrades. And one other thing to mention is that recently, well, maybe a couple of months ago, in the Google Classroom API, grading categories are now included as well. And so if you're not familiar with that API, I know many of the people here are very technical and very familiar with the, with the API for this one. But with grading categories now included, that means other programs could draw out those grades from the grading categories. So if you're exporting your grades to a, an SIS, a student database, you could easily recognize those grading categories. This one is brilliant. Uh, an update coming to Google Slides, making it easier to present Google Slides. I'd I wish I had this right now. Google Slides, you can now co-present Google Slides. So rather than just me controlling the slides as Peter and I are talking, you can actually have, you can co-present your slides and have more than one person with control. I think that's brilliant, very useful. And another really good one is that you can have your speaker notes alongside your presentation within Google Meet. So it's really good that we can see our presentation in Google Meet as we're presenting, but now you can actually bring those speaker notes in as well. Super excited for that one. Google Meet uh, recordings are coming out with closed captions. Very, very useful. So I think the last update was um, meetings were being transcribed into, I think, into the language being listed here. But in, in addition to those transcriptions, you now actually have a closed captions within the Google Meet recording. So it's very good, especially for schools working across multiple languages. This one, I'm sure we talked about this. Custom uh, Google Meet background images for your institution, you can provide custom images now. Um, so you can add those images for students and educators to use in their background, so you can provide those. You can roll them out for the organization. And this one looks super cool. Don't have it yet, but it is, actually, I love this little image of this Google Meet. People are so happy in this Google Meet. I love that image. What it does now, it will recognize when you wave your hand in the air, and it will automatically do that raise hand feature. So rather than having to go to the toolbox to raise your hand, it does it automatically. And you can see these people are loving this update. Me too. <laughs> OK. I think, Peter, back to you for Chromebooks. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, I'm just going to share my screen quickly and show you this feature really quickly. Uh, so this is an update which will allow it, um, students to, um, let me just uh, find the screen and I'll show you. So it will enable students to uh, simplify the text on a on a web page to make it easier to read. So really good for students who might have um, visual impairment or dyslexia, or you just want to strip out all those distractions on really busy web pages. And you can access it by going to uh, the side panel at the top here, and then reading mode. And once you've launched reading mode, so you can resize this. Make it bigger, as you can see, it's uh, remove the images. You can also um, do things like change the fonts. You can make it bigger or smaller. You can change the color palette it's using. Uh, so yeah, a really useful feature there. Uh, you can also launch it by, let's select a portion of text and right click on this, and then say, open in reading mode. And it will automatically jump to that piece of text and highlight that for you as well. So it's coming shortly to Chromebooks. Uh, you can already, if your Chromebook's on the beta version, you can access this by going into Chrome Flags and just searching for reading mode and enable it in there if you want to get an early preview. Uh, but I think it's coming in version, is it 114, I want to say? Yeah, 114. So yeah, it should be uh, yeah, out in, uh, I think, next month. I guess another Chromebook update, so Cursive. Uh, so Cursive was launched uh, last year to some Chromebooks and it allows you to write on screen using a stylus on your Chromebook. Uh, so really good for um, handwriting, taking notes, 
but the update here it's being more closely integrated with Google Workspace so now Workspace logins can be used to sign into Cursive and yeah everything gets saved against that logon then so making it much more uh, useful for students and staff. Uh, Chrome Canvas has had uh, some minor updates here. Um, Chrome Canvas, if you've never seen it before, is the built-in drawing tool uh, for the web app on Chromebooks uh, for drawing. Uh, any drawings now get saved to uh, Google Drive. Uh, and it's really good just for, um, yeah, as you can see here, creating a quick graphic or, um, yeah, uh, sketching and, uh, yeah, taking notes. Good job expanding on that one, Peter. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, onto the admin ones. I know you like this one better. Yes, yeah, so this is really, really useful for admins. So previously on Google Workspace, you could only assign Chrome policies to particular OUs. Uh, now you can assign Chrome policies to groups. So this is really useful if you want to uh, push out a particular application uh, to a group of users or if you want to set up a, a policy and only apply that to a group of users rather than an entire OU on Chrome. So yeah, really pleased to see this update um, and just how Google are now really leveraging groups uh, for assigning policies or admin roles, uh, which makes it um, much easier to uh, structure your domain. So you don't need to con uh, solely rely on OUs. Yeah, definitely. And of course, we can, you can include working with dynamic groups as well in that, can you? Absolutely, so dynamic really groups, manage. really powerful feature, dynamically create your groups, and yeah, it takes care of your group management for you then, even better. So Google have updated how uh, data processing is handled on Chromebooks, uh, bringing it more in line with Google Workspace. Uh, so yeah, not really too much more to say there, but it's uh, good to understand how that's all uh, being approved on Google's end. Okay. So this was, I think this was announced before BET. I remember reading about this a while ago, but um, Google's launching a way to better evaluate the safety of apps with app badges. So you get, and it's quite a small image here. It's a little bit hard to see that as a Math Boost app. But it's just a better way of getting an overview of how trustworthy or how safe an app is. Within the before it gets rolled out, so this is Peter. This is going to be in the you'd view this from the marketplace, correct? Yeah. yeah so when you go to add an app, uh, any admin console via the marketplace, you can see it uh, really clearly in there. And I think this is a really useful feature. App access is something we pick up on a lot of security audits. Uh, so it's good to see uh, you know, apps which are verified by Google uh, being a lot clearer now. Uh, so you get that assurance. Definitely. And it's always good to go and going back to talking about doing the audit. It is a good idea to go back and do an audit and see what apps are being um, have have permissions on your domain. And then indeed what apps are actually being used on the domain as well. Um, I'm sure we talked about this. So improve context aware access. Um, better better controls for context aware access are being launched. I think we've gone through a lot of different um, releases, but there are better controls coming to that, and you, both programmatically via API. You can also block managed um, Chrome browsers, uh, better data protection rule conditions. Um, and I, I think maybe the key thing here is understand how many users are going to be impacted before deploying the new settings. I think that's really good. So you'll get, get an overview of how many users are going to be impacted. Peter, I think uh, not massive amount to say about this. Additional, lo additional log event data in classroom and assignments. I think there's going to be some bigger, I don't think we can talk about them yet, but there's going to be some bigger news coming for Google Classroom and oversight in the future about that one. But for now, it's just about the log event data. OK, I think that is it for all of the updates. I've got a feeling we did about 40, 45 different updates.